very good morning to all of you so we will start the lecture 2 of our course on advanced hydraulics as we have mentioned in the last class the topic on advanced hydraulics is applicable to water resources engineering and even in various hydraulic project related engineering in the last class we had not mentioned some of the references that we are going to deal in the particular course today just illustrate some of the reference textbooks which we are going to deal first one is professor rajesh srivastava professor rajesh srivastava's book on flow through open channels this is published by oxford higher education another textbook or refer, uh, which we will refer is on professor k subramanyas book on flow in open channels this book is published by tata magra hill next we will be following is professor m hanif chaudhary's book on open channel flow this book is brought to you by springer publications and one more book which we will be going through is professor vt chow his book on open channel hydraulics published by magra hill international limited in addition to these books we may also refer some of the other books available already in the market or even in the websites we will also try to update with the latest informations available in our course related matters so as was mentioned in the last class we will be having regular quizzes as a part of evaluation on this course so the students are advised to be always attentive on the course lectures they have to be prepared for the quiz at any time even during the middle of a lecture or during the beginning of the lecture or during the end of the lecture and it may be taken in a random way today we will be conducting the quiz on the last day's lecture in the beginning of this lecture today it was well advised to you before coming to the class itself that there will be a quiz on yesterday's lecture so today let us 
just give you a quiz on the following topics. First question for quiz 1. First question on quiz 1 is, who suggested that the quantity pressure that the quantity pressure is not having any direction in fluid you have to name the scientist who has suggested the pressure is not having any direction in fluid. The second question is who developed the barometer? Who was the scientist who developed barometer first. The next question is, name the scientist who measured velocity of flow in a river by his own pedometer method. Name the scientist who developed his own pedometer method to measure river velocity. The fourth and final question, the fourth and final question, give the names of, give the names of some well known hydraulic projects in India. Okay, give five names, give names of, uh, give names of five some well known hydraulic projects in India. We will give the solution of this question after today's lecture. So, as per our course contents, we described some modules, some six modules related to the course and the first module is open channel flows. So, we had discussed some of the contents of the open channel flows in this module. What all things we will go through in this particular module. Now, as a beginning, let us ask you what is meant by open channel flow? What is meant by open channel flow? If any of you has some inputs on this question, you are free to discuss on that. So, open channel flow, it means that 
the flow of liquid which is open to atmosphere the flow of liquid in which it is open to atmosphere that is called open channel flow you might have seen the various type of open channel flows in various situations that is whether it is in rivers whether it is in canals whether it is in channels various types of channels even in large pipes where water is not fully occupying the cross sectional area in various cases you will see open channel flow that is in these situations the flow the top surface of the water it is open to atmosphere in rivers canals channels it is readily visible uh, visual, uh, visual to you however in pipes say if there is a circular pipe and if the level of water is only this much and if it is open to atmosphere if the top surface of water if it is open to atmosphere even in this closed pipes the flow is called open channel flow it doesn't matter if it is an enclosed conduit and all if it, if the top surface of water is open to atmosphere it is considered as open channel flow why do you study open channel flow what are the various purposes why do you want to study open channel flows there are several reasons you can enumerate them this will able you if you study open channel flow it will help you to measure discharge of water in rivers canals etc it will help you to design canals for irrigation for navigation for various purposes it will help you to design dams and find its capacities it will also help you to understand say if any flood wave if you take a particular channel water is there and if if this is the bed of the channel flow is occurring in this direction if all of a sudden if some wave flood waves appear how the flood wave say if it is there a certain flood wave it may propagate in this direction and how the movement of this flood wave occurs and how it affects the entire channel hydraulics that can be studied using your open channel flow methods
you can also study open channel means by studying open channel flow it will be useful for sediment transport analysis well this is an another course sediment transport by studying the same course you will be able to find say you will be able to find the movement of biological organism living organisms in river especially say if some fishes lay eggs in large quantities how the movement of eggs occur in the channel how they can affect or how some of the human intervention can affect the movement of these living organisms that can also be studied using open channel flow you can also study the movement of pollutants in streams so there are various reasons for which you can study open channel flow so on open channel flows now you need to identify what are the different classifications of open channels what are the classifications of open channels it can be analyzed in any way you can classify open channels by any methods that it is an individualistic property as it is mentioned say one can classify open channel based on some parameters one can classify open channels based on some of the locations one can classify open channel based on other variables non physical variables physical variables whether it be anything you it is an individual property however let us suggest in our course that we can classify open channels basically with respect to two main parameters that is we are going to classify the open channels basically with respect to the channel properties as well as the flow properties so one can classify open channels based on channel properties and flow properties how can you classify them what is meant by channel properties what is meant by flow properties so this again it is as mentioned some of the individualistic perceptions but there are some common theories behind this thing and we will see some of the common definitions that are used for channel classifications first we will go through the channel properties to classify open channels in short form for open channel flows i may write it ocf and for open channel i may write in short form as oc so in the classification of open channel the open channel classifications based on channel properties based on channel properties you can define it say a
prismatic and non prismatic channels. What is meant by prismatic and non prismatic channels? As the word suggests, prismatic it is something representing a prismoid form. If the cross section area, if the cross section area of a channel, if it does not vary for a considerable stretch, if it is a uniform cross section throughout the reach of the channel, then such type of channels are called prismatic channels. If the cross sectional area varies with distance or with as you proceed in the length, if it varies considerably, those channels are called non prismatic channels. If I just draw say for example, if you observe a laboratory flume, I hope you know what is meant by laboratory flume. Students who have studied fluid mechanics and all, some of you might have already done some experiments in laboratory flumes and all. A laboratory flume is a channel established in lab with a uniform cross section that is used for studying various flow phenomena. So, if a ch channel cross section, if this is a channel artificially created channel, it is established in laboratory and all. Here, it has a rectangular cross section and the rectangular cross section is maintained throughout the length of the plume. Flow, you can analyze flow coming in and say water going out from this plume. All this phenomenon can be studied in such laboratory flume. A laboratory flume is a classical example of prismatic channel. You might have also seen prismatic channels where say trapezoidal area is used for constructing a trapezoidal cross sectional area is used to construct irrigation channels and mostly most of the irrigation channels in India is of this particular cross section. Such type of channels they are also called prismatic channels because its cross sectional area it is uniform throughout the length of the stream. The next one is non prismatic channel and as the name mentioned the cross sectional area varies with respect to the distance. So, it may have some a non prismatic channel for example, a river cross section, a natural drain cross section and all. There the cross sectional area, the width of the channel, the depth of the channel, they all vary with distance. So, they are called classified as non prismatic channels. Our next classification based on channel properties they are natural and artificial channels. The next classification you can give it as natural and artificial channels that is naturally formed channels on earth, artificially man made channels you can give several explanations, these are, these are all self explanatory. So, natural channels you will I, uh, see them in rivers, natural rains and all artificial channels. 
there are many artificial channels that are of utmost importance you have already seen the case of laboratory flume which is a small structure you have you may see various artificial channels that carry large amount of water for example if man would not have created artificially suez canal or if you would not have created panama canal how much difficult it would have been or how much the human life had been made easier by construction of these artificial channels so artificial channels are also quite prominent and it is need not be that always it should be the natural thing that has to be given predominance and all man has endured in the engineering science in such a way he has tried to merge the natural things with the man made things and all so it quite amazing next classification we can give based on the channel properties rigid and mobile boundary channels what do you mean by mobile boundary channel what do you mean by rigid boundary channel any guess you know the in the channel flow if there is a bed water is flowing it has a cross section say maybe trapezoid let us assume that trapezoid so the channel boundaries include the channel bottom the channel sides all these things are coming into picture so there are lot of interaction of water with the channel boundaries bed sides and all if due to these interactions if these boundaries if they are not stable in if they also start if the particles in that if they also starts moving whether it be in the bed whether it be in the sides such type of channels are called mobile boundary channels and the reverse of that that is if even despite of enormous amount of flow in that channel if these boundaries remain firm such boundaries are called rigid boundary channels if one go through the mobile boundary channels and all you may see that erosion and all occurs along the boundaries these erosions will lead to the sediment deposit in some other location the sediment deposits sediment transport especially the sediment transportation and all it is a much research topic nowadays for especially for very large rivers or for any hydraulic project related issues and all sediment transport is that is sediment transport is quite large research topic well we are not going into the details of sediment transport this is an another level post grad progress post graduate level course you may be able to do research after undergoing this course and all if you are interested you can specialize on sediment transport and all that will be much much a claim so till now we have classified channels based on the channel properties now we can classify channels based on flow properties we can classify channels based on flow properties how can you classify based on flow properties any guess from anyone we have seen in the last class that is in the first class in our first lecture we have seen that any fluid property or any flow properties they can be classified 
or sorry they can be described using the following parameters. Randomness, space, time. Using this following, using these three fundamental parameters, you can describe any fluid flow properties. So, if you want to classify any flow properties, you have to classify according to the descriptions on these fundamental parameters, fine. So, let us see how these fundamental parameters on the variations of these fundamental parameters, how the flow is classified. First, let us take randomness. Randomness is such a property that is attributed to a variable who is having random nature. It is attributed to a variable having its random nature. So, a variable can exist in a probabilistic way or it can exist in a deterministic way. So, any fluid property that can be suggested as say if there is no randomness for that fluid property, then that fluid property is called deterministic fluid property. If there is no, if there are randomness appearing in the fluid properties, such things are called stochastic properties. So, or probabilistic. Sometimes in some of the things you may see probabilis probabilistic variable or probabilistic property. So, you can based on these phenomenon you may identify the properties appropriately any fluid flow properties appropriately. In our lecture however, we are not going to deal on randomness we will be dealing only with the deterministic nature of the fluid flow. The higher stochastic or probabilistic nature of the fluid flow and all will be dealt in higher level courses which as mentioned earlier, if you are interested you can specialize them. Next based on time, any fluid property if it does not vary with respect to time, then that fluid property is called steady and if it varies with respect to time it is called unsteady. There is not require much say any fluid property if you can say velocity, discharge, depth of flow. Say if in a channel if these properties at a location if it is not varying with respect to time then that flow is called steady flow. So, in channels you can suggest that such type of channels are called steady flow channels or in the channel flows those flows are steady flows. Similarly, if these properties vary with respect to time, they are unsteady open channel flows. Our next parameter is space, here again we can classify say if any fluid property, if you are not varying with respect to space considerably if you are suggesting that for a considerable large location, if that fluid property, if it is clubbed together as some particular value, then that is called lump flow property. And if the properties, if it varies with respect to space, 
channel location at each small small location each distance from the origin if the fluid properties varies and if you are measuring them such things are called distributed flow properties usually lump flow properties and all you may see if you take the cross sectional area for the entire cross sectional area of the river if you are clubbing together to obtain a single discharge or if you are clubbing together the velocity if the entire cross section if the section the river section may be quite large and all still if you are using a common velocity term for the entire section without measuring at various location then that velocity is lumped with respect to space there you are not averaging them so such things are called lumped properties and the other things are distributed properties so let us see using these fundamental three parameters and all how the fluid flow properties are named especially with respect to space as you have mentioned lumped and distributed as you have mentioned the lumped and distributed in the distributed thing based on your coordinate system you can have one dimensional fluid flow properties you can have two dimensional fluid flow properties you can have three dimensional fluid flow properties if you are following a cartesian coordinate system say x1 x2 x3 as the three basic directions in a cartesian coordinate system or you can maybe you are you may be more familiar with such notation x y z the same coordinate system if y is given in the other direction x y z the cartesian coordinate system can be represented in any form we may use any of this cartesian coordinate system you may see in higher order mathematical analysis and all it is quite common to use the suffixes x1 x2 x3 etc if there is n dimensional plane and all n dimensional representation they find it quite easier to represent x1 x2 x3 etc xn as the n dimensional problem in our three dimensional cartesian coordinate system for our simplicity we may use we can use the following x y z cartesian coordinate system so how a one dimensional problem how a one dimensional problem varies in a cartesian coordinate system let us take the channel bed and all for a one one dimensional problem if you are taking velocity as the property if you are want to identify velocity as a property here based on your same coordinate systems let us suggest say z axis x axis at any location at any x you may see the velocity of the flow is v especially in the x direction the flow is in the x direction x y z in the x y z cartesian coordinate system here in the one dimensional problem we are assuming the flow is in x direction and you will see that velocity here this will be function of only x velocity in the one dimensional problem is not being suggested to vary with respect to the height in the z 
coordinate system. So, it is only a function of x. You may also see that the z coordinate itself is function of x in such situations. So, this is a one dimensional fluid flow proper representation. A two dimensional fluid flow representation you may give them say again based on the coordinate system x z you will see that any fluid property V any fluid property V it varies that is it varies with respect to the height z as well as it varies with respect to the x coordinate system. Here you can write V as function of x and z. Similarly, again z is also function of x in this case. So, you can represent velocity in both the coordinates that is why it is a two dimensional problem. In this case only one dimension was used to represent the fluid property whereas, here two dimensions were used that is how you classify them. You can again classify for a three dimensional case for a three dimensional case say if there is a large cross section of a river. the entire quantity here velocity it may depend on say if your coordinate system x y z suppose if these are the coordinate systems or let us suggest that x y z the positive right hand screw the following coordinate system is being employed here x y z. You will see that the flow if it is predominantly even though if it is in this direction the velocity here at any location it will be function of x axis, y axis, z axis. You need the identities in x, y and z to describe the velocity vector there. You can describe maybe y and z with respect to x if, if that is possible in such flows and all that will be dealt. So, higher order three dimensional problems and all using various computational methods one will be able to solve them. So, this is how you can classify using flow properties, various type of flow properties. What is meant by uniform flow and non-uniform flow? What do you mean by them? This is also classi classification based on flow properties. uniform flow as the name suggests say any fluid properties velocity, discharge, height, depth whatever be whatever properties you are taking. If these properties are uniform for a considerable stretch of the channel then such type of flow are called uniform flow. So, if a channel stretch of length L if it is taken 
and if it is found that this velocity v from section a a to section b b if it is having the same velocity throughout this length then that is called uniform flow suppose if the velocity is varying say at section a it is v1 at section b b it is v2 and if it is varying with respect to uh, as it goes in the flow direction then such type of flows are called non uniform flows so in nature you will see most of the time non uniform flow and as well as it you will see unsteady flows with respect to time and all another classification based on flow properties is as we have mentioned non uniform flow uniform flow and non uniform flow in the non uniform flow category you can describe gradually varied flow rapidly varied flow spatially varied flow just a brief one line description that gradually varied flow means where the properties whichever are taken into consideration if it varies gradually along the length of the channel then the proper those type of flow are called non gradually varied flow those type of non uniform flows are called gradually varied flow in a rapidly varied flow as the name suggests the fluid properties it will be varying rapidly for example the height of water or the velocity of water it may change rapidly from one section to another section spatially varied flow suppose if some quantities of water or volume of water if it is added in between some two sections or if it is continuously added at some locations and all the amount of water is getting changed the total volume of water is getting changed spatially it is changing so that type of flows are called spatially varied flow and we have separate modules to discuss on this aspect we we are not going to describe it in this particular module what do you mean by say in a particular if you take an arbitrary channel an arbitrary channel you can describe you can describe say the depth of channel as y forget about the cartesian coordinate system which we are given earlier let me talk it in terms of y here the depth of water at any channel section that is this y you can represent it as a quantity the bottom width you can represent it as a quantity you can also represent the top width of the channel that is also a quantity you can also represent say the wetted perimeter that is this much length of the or this much length of the perimeter it is wetted by water in any cross section you can define it as a channel geometric term terminology so that is called wetted perimeter p so you can define it for any cross section say in the rectangular cross section in the trapezoidal cross section in the triangular cross section maybe semi circular cross section whichever cross sectional forms you observe in the in your various courses or whichever labs or even in fields and all whichever type of cross sectional canals you have observed you can define these terminologies these terminologies are almost standard in almost all textbooks and all we will be using some of the properties to define some hydraulic properties for example 
you might have heard about the term called hydraulic radius. What is meant by hydraulic radius? It can be defined based on the geometries given, whatever geometries has been given it can be defined and the definition is unique it irrespective of the type of channel section you can name it appropriately right. So, what is meant by hydraulic radius? It is a term developed from the channel cross section it is very much used in our fluid flow analysis especially the channel flow analysis and all various place instances you will find the term hydraulic radius from the channel geometry irrespective of whatever type of channel cross sections available hydraulic radius is defined as the area of the cross section divided by the wetted perimeter given to you say if it is a rectangular cross section your p is nothing but b plus 2 y if it is triangular cross section you know the area how to evaluate the area if y is given to you and if this width is given to you if it is a semicircular one. So, irrespective of the channel cross sectional areas you can define a, the term called hydraulic radius as a by p. Similarly, another term is called hydraulic depth that also we will be dealing in some of the other classes. So, today lecture we would like to wind up, wind up now we will also be conducting quiz number 2 based on today's lecture. So, please note some of the questions for quiz number 2. So, in quiz 2 you have to tell the difference between prismatic and non prismatic channel in two lines. prismatic and non prismatic channel difference in two sentences maximum two sentences. The next question is based on the parameter randomness based on the parameter randomness you can define any fluid property as dash and dash that is how do you define a fluid property based on the parameter randomness? If randomness is present and randomness is absent, what are those that you have to fill in the blanks? The third question for the quiz you have to define what is hydraulic. radius. So, in the quiz number 2 we will be having only 3 questions. The solutions, the solutions for quiz 1 the first question is asked you was who suggested the quantity called pressure is not having any direction 
it was the scientist Pascal. The second question raised to you was who was the scientist who developed barometer first? It was the scientist Torricelli. So, name the scientist who measured velocity of flow in a river by his own pedometer methods. Leonardo Da Vinci. Give the names of some well known hydraulic projects in India and that is an individual question. I hope some of you might have or all of you might have answered appropriately according to his or her own choices. There are various hydraulic projects in India. I do not want to illustrate them. It is up to you to illustrate some five names. The solution for Q2. What is meant by prismatic and non prismatic channel? The solution is if the cross sectional area of a channel, if it is uniform for a considerable stretch or length of the channel, then that channel is called prismatic channel. If the cross section it is varying with respect to time, then that, sorry with respect to the channel length that is called non prismatic channel as you see in rivers, natural rivers and drains. Next second question asked to you was based on the parameter randomness you can define any fluid properties as say if randomness is not present then that property is called deterministic fluid property. If randomness is present then that fluid property we suggest it is having stochastic or probabilistic property. The third question asked to you was what is meant by hydraulic radius? Hydraulic radius we gave it symbolically as R, it is the area of cross section divided by wetted perimeter, fine. So, like this we would like to wind up today's lecture. In the next lecture we will continue with the same module on the different topics which are to be covered there. You are requested to come prepare in the next class as well and also be attentive in the next lecture. Thank you.